Septum piercings. Pros, cons, advantages, disadvantages. Going to be five of each of those along with what you should know before getting it done, the piercing experience, healing the piercing, jewelry, living with the piercing, and what happens if you decide you want to abandon it and just give up on it. Coming up next on Pros and Cons by a Piercer, Season 2, Episode number 17. So you might want to stick around. For those who are new to the channel, first up, welcome to the channel. I hope you're enjoying the videos. I hope you're finding them educational and etc. But you might not know exactly who I am. My name is Davo. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I own, I operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located right here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So, when I talk to you about these things, I'm talking to a level of expertise that comes from being in the body piercing industry for well over 26 years. Piercing we're going to talk about today is the septum piercing. Septum piercings uh, are located in the nose. <laughs> Basically, uh, there, there's two kind of plates. There's a longer plate that goes up to the septum bone, bone, and then there's two pieces of cartilage that are one that's below the septum bone that's kind of attached to it, and then one that's right at the base of the nostrils on the inside. Um, if nobody's around, first check, because it ain't polite to do it in polite society. Stick your index finger up your nose and then pinch down with your thumb. You'll notice that the two plates kind of separate a little bit and there's a hollow spot inside there. That's where the piercing goes. Um, they can be pierced into the cartilage a little bit, but I don't, you know, above, but I don't really suggest doing it below. They should be pierced as far forward as possible so that they hang away from the face. They shouldn't be really close to the face. It just looks better if they hang. This is an old piercing, and we've it's been part of our our DNA, so to speak, in our culture for a very long time. Uh, it can be represented in uh, pretty much every culture on the planet at some point, um, including uh, Native Americans, uh, India, of course, uh, Asia, Africa, uh, the Rim Pacific. Uh, like in uh, New Guinea is a really place where they were really predominant. Also, it's been used for uh, animal training of domestic animals, uh, especially bulls and boars, uh, you know, male pigs and male cows. So when your very not-so-witty uncle talks about hooking you up to the fence post by your uh, bull ring, they're talking about your septum piercing. Ha, ha, ha. With that out of the way, let's move on to the pros, the advantages, the things we like, the things that make this piercing great, the piercings that make us want to get it. Starting with number one, this piercing has, of course, a long history of healing. It is not a very difficult heal in most cases. It heals fairly easy. Um, it's not really complicated. It's not experimental. You're not going to be prone to a lot of issues and problems for that reason. A lot of people have gone before you and have healed this piercing with little or no issue. Next, number two, easy to hide. Uh, with this piercing, you can, with uh, what I generally suggest is piercing initially with a circular barbell, and we'll get more into that later, but you can flip the jewelry up, and unless they're looking directly up your nose, they're not going to notice you have this piercing at all. I Unless, yeah, like I said, if they're sitting below you or above, and you're standing over them, they might be able to see it, but usually most people don't even notice it unless it is flipped down or you're wearing a ring or something in it. Number three, this can go from extremes to very simplistic, subtle elegance uh, or vice versa. It depends on the jewelry. You can go from everything from a very simple, thin 16-gauge uh, ring, seamless, Two, all the way to, uh, you know, uh, tusks that are uh, that wide around, about the size of a quarter, and hang down below your chin. It really depends on the look, your fashion, your style, and what you're going for war, um, with this particular piercing. But you have a lot of choices, and that's the next one. Number four, there's a large variety of jewelry. The popularity of this piercing has just skyrocketed to the point where I often find it difficult to keep jewelry in stock. I mean, when I go to order, it's back ordered, especially the circular barbells, three eight, like 14 and 16 gauge, three eights. 
I uh, but you can get everything from the clickers and uh, very detailed gym settings to really simplistic rings to the curved barbells to septum retainers. There is a lot of jewelry to choose from and express yourself as you would like to express yourself. The last one is that this is a piercing that it is easy to isolate. Because of its location and the fact that it's kind of isolated by the nose and the fact that you don't sleep flat on your nose, it's short of being in, uh, you know getting hit in the face over and over again. This piercing is going to avoid a lot of trauma and a lot of issues because of it. It's easy to isolate. It's easy to not bang around a lot or move a lot. So it's a that's one of the reasons why it makes such an easy heal. I don't even think it's really affected by the mass when in comparison to lip piercings and uh, nostril piercings and et cetera. With that out of the way, I just want to suggest that you give us a thumbs up if you like this. Uh, we like it when you like it. And it, it helps boost my self-esteem and uh, makes me feel like I'm actually doing something productive. Um, if you like us enough to subscribe, please do so. Hit that notification bell so that you're notified every single time we post a video. Now let's move on to the cons, the disadvantages, the things that make us go, eh, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'll do something else. I don't know. Starting with number one, nobody's nose is straight. Uh, it's a misconception that your nose is straight, that it's not crooked, it's not off a little bit to one side or the other, or that it's exactly symmetrical, and this drives the symmetrical uh, excessive nuts. But that's the truth of the matter. So often this piercing, even though it's done correctly, correctly to the anatomy, will look crooked. So we try to pierce it in a way that it kind of uh, meets the two and looks straight more so than is straight. Second one, number two, can't affect employment. Though this piercing is becoming increasingly more self-established or socially accepted, and you can hide it, it is another, it's one of those piercings that some people are just not okay with or not have been exposed to it enough, and it's kind of ex thought of as more extreme than, let's say, a simple nostril piercing with a stud or like some ear piercings. So uh, if you are in the job market or you work in a profession where it's very conservative or you're looking for jobs in that area, even the service industry in some cases or maybe what, you know, a little less down the ladder, so to speak, you do want to have an arsenal of jewelry that's easy to flip up and hide for work. Uh, it's just one of those piercings uh, that just is prone to that. So keep that in mind. Number three, uh, there's a lot of reasons that attribute to this, one of them being swelling and migration, but often, or not often, but from time to time, these piercings will heal crooked. Um, either the pressure, the, the, uh, the, the swelling, or what have you, will make it go off a little bit this way or that way or that way or that way, and then suddenly what was straight is no longer straight. The good news is often they can be adjusted and kind of applied pressure one way or another to kind of move them back into place, but sometimes they do heal crooked. And number four, can't remove the jewelry during the healing process. This goes back to the job, etc., and the fact that often people will get it done with a ring then go to work and find out that their really liberal boss or what have you is like, no, you can't wear that at work. So then they're on the phone to me two days into the healing process asking me if they can change the jewelry or how to remove it. I This piercing... You, you need to leave the jewelry in the whole time. You don't want to change it during the healing process. It's best just to leave it alone um, during the whole time. You can lose the piercing. It can be difficult to get the jewelry back in. If you leave it out for too long, it can cause issues uh, with getting it back in or it can close on you. Now, number five, uh, originally I had down larger jewelry can cause headaches, but I think a more, more crucial one is they can stink. Uh, your body produces something called sebums. It tends to, or sebum uh, oils, it's kind of a waxy oil, and it will collect sometimes inside piercings and sometimes on piercing jewelry. It smells like the inside of your navel if you haven't washed it for two weeks. It's nasty, and because it's in your nose, you really smell it. Usually, uh, just cleaning this on a regular basis, and I'll cover this a little bit more uh, later on or, talk, or bring it up again, uh, usually makes it go away. Uh, in some cases, I've had a lot of clients that say that over time, they don't smell it as much. Now, how much of that is it just kind of slows down on what it's doing, and how much of it is 
you became nose blind to it is kind of questionable. Here's the thing, though. Uh, it's in your nose, so it's right there. You are going to smell anything that's on that jewelry. That's just part of it. Sorry. Before we move on to things you should look for and all that fun stuff or know before you get it done, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. There's a lot of different products, designs. If you like swag, you like things like T-shirts, phone cases, stickers, I uh, leggings, banners, throw pillows check it out links are in the description there's also one of those merch bars down there and it helps out the channel and you know you look cool at the same time or you could decorate your apartment really well or house okay let's move on to what you should know beforehand the first thing is is when choosing your piercer you should find somebody that is passionate about what they do has a lot of experience doing it likes is informative likes uh, informing and teaching and and giving you information and actually likes being around people is personable it makes you feel comfortable it makes you feel like this is an exciting fun adventure instead of uh yeah you bothered me in the middle of something and i and, and, and. exactly now uh they should also give you some form of a consultation where they discuss the risk involved um, how long it's going to take to heal, uh, maybe take a quick look at your anatomy, talk to you about jewelry choices, um, and what it's going to, you know, anything that may be involved with that particular piercing uh, before they do the piercing. Before. In my experience, and my suggestion is circular jewelry with this one. Uh, they should suggest either a ring or something circular or the most common or what I really suggest. Pretty much every client that comes in, a circular barbell. They should talk to you about how barbells are e or circular barbells are easier to flip up. I know I keep bringing this up again, and I'll probably bring it up a couple more times. But I think it's important because I don't think a lot of people really understand uh, that there's kind of a little bit of social stigma to this and in cer with certain people, and it's easy to have that option during the healing process and not have to deal with it. And then afterwards, you can wear your ring when you want to, and when you think you're going to be in a situation where you might get some flack for it or work or what have you, you can switch out to uh, the circular barbell and easily flip it up. They should probably mention this. Now, you should ask if they give aftercare instructions. They should be written in verbal. Now, during the pandemic, most of us have set up, uh, have recorded uh, videos to kind of limit the amount of time that we spend with people, but still continue to educate them. If they do have those videos, it's not a bad idea to watch them ahead of time. That way you know what it's going to take, and you can sit down with them and you and ask questions. Write them down if you, if you feel like you're not going to remember them so that you can have that one-on-one -on -one time after the fact. I usually go through like a set of a, a in-depth, it's usually about a two- or three-minute kind of quick explanation on things, not like it usually is. Hopefully once the pandemic's over, we go back to normal. The other thing is you want to ask them if they stock or provide or know where you can get aftercare product. It's a good idea sometimes if they don't sell it to go out and purchase it beforehand so that you have it on hand. Uh, personally, me, I like uh, Nomad's uh, Piercing Aftercare. It's sterile saline in a can. It's wonderful. comes out in a mist. Easy to work with, easy to deal with, and it, it heals piercings, which is what you want. Now let's talk about the piercing experience itself. Now, uh, first off, they should have gone through a consultation with you. After the consultation, uh, maybe pick out jewelry that's going to work for you. And then they're going to go through the waiver or have you fill out the waiver and start setting up. Once they're set up, they're going to disinfect the area, clean, uh, clean the area. Then after that's good and dry, what I will usually do is size. If I'm doing it with a circular barbell, I will size it. And what I mean by that is often what we'll do is we'll take a 3 8 barbell width and then we will expand it so that it easily flips up and down. It is not too long, and it's easy to put it in there. Um, would you need to flip it up if you need to? So it's easier to do that and a lot less painful to do it beforehand than to do it after. So I'd like to do it right before I get into the point where I'm going to start marking it. Next up would be marking. I do The thing about this is they have to be able to see up your nose. I know a lot of people will do it sitting up and et cetera. I, I don't really like that method personally, but that's another thing, and that's a personal preference as a piercer. I like to uh, set them up on the edge of the bed or edge of the bed back there with their head like, like that, tilted over the back so I can look directly. Uh, when I look down, I look directly into their nose. 
Go fill around a little bit to find that sweet spot. Make sure it's there. Mark it on both sides. And then get ready to do the piercing. Piercing, it can be done with forceps. There are some people that swear by them. Uh, they're either with the old school Pennington forceps or they'll use, they're actually called septum forceps. Uh, it's two tubes, and they kind of clamp into that area and kind of separate it. I'm not a big fan of that because it tends to cause that tissue to kind of roll around and move a lot, and it can really affect your placement in some cases. Personally, I like to do it with a needle receiving tube, um, basically just a, just a needle, do it totally freehand. It seems to work best for me. And over the years, I've found it, I get a lot straighter of a piercing and one that looks better. Now, uh, next thing I do is always put the blunt end of the needle against the mark to make sure that I'm definitely hitting that sweet spot. Uh, it can kind of be a little taxing to make sure that you do. It's stressful in some cases. It's one of the reasons why piercers sometimes, most piercers struggle with this uh, and don't particularly care to do them. Uh, they, it can be complicated. The, the results can come out weird sometimes, and it's just kind of frustrating. So, I will check it with the blunt end just to make sure that I can feel that I'm definitely hitting it. Then flip the needle around, push it through right in that needle receiving tube, slide the jewelry in, and put the ball on. Now, it can usually you might see a little bit of slight bleeding for a few minutes after the piercing is done. It may take a little while to get the jewelry in and get the closure on. Either the ball, you know, the scoring on the squirrel, eh, screwing on the ball. <laughs> Or, and sometimes it's as difficult as I, I have the same difficulty I just had with pronunciating that, uh, or pronouncing, pronunciating. Why did I say pronounce? Yeah, anyway. Um, or putting in the threadless end or whatever they're using. They, that can be sometimes a thing that takes the longest. Uh, stopping any bleeding occurs whatsoever. Uh, if you are concerned about whether or not you're going to be able to flip it up and down, it might be a good idea to have them do it at that point in time just to make sure that that's easy to do. Aftermath, you're going to feel a little bit of throbbing and aching for a few minutes. Uh, also, it's going to be tender to the touch, um, and that will continue, and we'll get into that when we get into healing. In some cases, you might see a little bit of slight bruising, but that's pretty. But usually it's when a, a forceps are used. It's pretty rare, but it can happen. Uh, you can break a blood vessel, and then it starts bleeding under the skin, and it'll turn colors. It, it usually only lasts a few days, but you know, if it lasts more than, like, say, two days or three days and it starts it doesn't seem like it's fading you probably want to see somebody about that and get that checked out now the healing first off you're looking at average healing time and it varies greatly from person to person some people that are super lucky you'll get it about eight weeks even a little bit less most people it's more in that 12 to 16 weeks period it seems to be like the sweet spot um this piercing has two sweet spots i guess of course, clean it twice daily with a saline solution. Then uh, practice cross-contamination prevention. Things like uh, isolating the piercing, uh, which is the main part of it. Uh, wash your hands before you handle it. No oral contact. Always change the bodily fluids. Keeping your environment clean. Clothing, bedding, towels, anything that may come in contact with it. Keep pets away from it. Don't let them sleep in the bed with you. And uh, do not submerge the piercing in bodies of water you cannot control the quality of, which is everything but your own clean bathtub. So, in other words, no, you can't swim until it heals. No swimming. That's the way it works. Sorry. That's the way it is. As I mentioned before, isolate. Avoid contact with unclean objects. Uh, I don't know what you would do that would have that. Also, because it constantly comes up, and I know it's because people have been telling people for years to use Q-tips. Don't use Q-tips. Don't. It's just a source of contamination, and those little strands get off and get caught on the jewelry. No reason to use them. A little bit of discharge being left on the jewelry is not a terrible thing. It's part of your body's uh, method of fighting off foreign pathogens. So let it get off most of it, but don't be really concerned if there's a little bit left. If you get in there and start picking it, it's like picking a scab. You're just opening the wound and making it more acceptable to problems. The only time it comes into uh, issues is when the jewelry's moved, which you're not supposed to be moving the jewelry. Now, it's not going to be uncommon to see some signs of infection like redness, discolorization, heat, tenderness to touch, inflammation. Uh, basically, if you touch it and it hurts, that's not, uh, that's not a problem. Stop touching it. 
if you need to flip the jewelry up for work or school or some other activity, do it at the beginning of the period of time you do that. Meaning, if you do that for the you know Monday through Friday, flip it up on Monday, and if you must, flip it down on Friday. You can heal the piercing with the jewelry up the whole time. There's absolutely no reason not to do that. Uh, but don't constantly be flipping it up and down several times a day because that's going to cause problems, including prolonged healing. Check the tightness of the balls on a regular basis. They can come unscrewed on their own, especially if you're flipping it up and down all the time. Um, if you have threaded jewelry, on threaded jewelry, it's a good idea to make sure they're on there tight. Uh, just check them because they usually fall off at the worst possible time. And I'm always concerned that somebody's going to end up with that in their sinuses, which I don't know how, I don't, I don't think it'll be a good deal. Don't. In the final weeks, if the piercing is healed a little bit crooked, applying slight pressure uh, to the point you don't want to do anything that's painful, one way or another can sometimes straighten the piercing out and make it look like it's straight again. Also, keep in mind that if you are doing it with a circular barbell, sometimes when they're expanded, they'll start they, it, it just you're disforming that perfect perfect circle. So it's making it can make it seem a little longer on one side than the other. Uh, and then you put a ring in that's smaller, and it looks perfect. Now let's talk about jewelry. Uh, jewelry should be kept in at all times, in my opinion. Uh, you shouldn't leave piercings open. There's no reason to take it out to uh, clean or any of that nonsense. You should only take jewelry out to replace it. Body piercing jewelry is designed to be in the body for a long period of time. Uh, constantly changing it is just asking for issues in most cases. Uh, or the possibility that you, the, the weird possibility or the terrible possibility that you cause damage to the piercing and then cause an infection in the heel piercing. Um, also, that you would uh, dislodge it or introduce a pathogen and then cause an infection, or you simply can't get the jewelry back in. It's my opinion, circular jewelry is your best option. Uh, you can wear, I've had clients that have worn like plugs, barbells, etc as a way to hide them but it seems like rings work best in it they just look better and they don't you know especially if you want somebody to see them unless you were to walk around with your nose like like with your nose in the air like this all day nobody's gonna see it so rings circular jewelry there's a lot of variety out there the three major types are barbells rings and clickers on this one a lot of those clickers you really want to be careful with it, don't buy low-end ones uh, the issues start to create that they're not wide enough for the amount of tissue that the piercing went through. The other problem with them is they have really cheap hinges, and there's gaps there that stuff collects in, and uh, it can cause some problems. Uh, just make sure that your jewelry is impact grade whenever you buy it, and stay away from the junk. Now let's talk about living with the piercing. Of course, jewelry should be left in at all times. This piercing... It doesn't close as rapidly as other piercings, and I've had clients that have taken it out for a couple of years after they've had it for five or six years and had no problem putting it back in five, ten years later. It's just one of those piercings, but not everybody is that lucky. If you like it, leave something in it. It's that simple. Now, even though the piercing is healed, do you want to avoid pressure, trauma, et cetera, to the piercing? Don't yank on it, pull on it, sleep on it, go to boxing, you know, have people punch you in the nose, all that stuff. You have a hard metal object inside soft tissue. No matter how far in the healing process it is, it can tear or rip easily. So isolate it. Treat it like with respect, and you'll have it for the rest of your life. As I mentioned before in the, in the cons about the smell, cleaning it with uh, after it heals. I don't suggest doing this while it's healing, and usually they don't. you don't smell it during the healing process. Sometimes you do, but usually not. And usually that might be a sign that you're done, you're healed. Uh, washing it with uh, in the shower with some warm water and soap is perfectly fine to remove that. Uh, generally, that'll take most of the smell out of it. But like I said, I think some people, they just become nose blind to it. And the only person that's smelling it is you. You're not stinking up the joint, just to let you know. Lastly, abandoning the piercing. Now, when you remove the jewelry, as I mentioned earlier, sometimes these will stay open for a long period of time. But it's up your nose. Nobody's going to see the holes. It'll leave a small indentation scar. Uh, if it does close, it'll close in the center and then very slowly fill up outward um, and fade over time. 
If the piercing is healthy when you remove the jewelry, there's really nothing you need to do. If it's during the healing process, treat it like you would any other wound. Keep an eye on it. Monitor it. Keep it clean. Keep things away from it. And if you see any issues, contact a medical professional. Lastly, with sebum, it can be produced inside piercings. It's not uncommon. Uh, even abandoned piercings, and then it kind of floats to the surface or you squeeze it and it comes out. It's perfectly normal. It's not something you need to be worried about. It doesn't mean it's infected. It doesn't mean you need to really do anything. Just clean the area and it'll go away. If you smell it, like after you've abandoned the piercing, that's exactly what's happening. Warm water, soap, that's all you need to worry about. Well, uh, I hope you found this informative. Uh, That's all I have to say on this. If I miss something or you have something to add, please leave a comment. I'm slowly catching up. I'm I'm trying. I'm trying. It's been busy lately. <sighs> Till next time, here's hoping all your piercings heal with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope you see for your body piercing needs in the future. Thank you for watching, everybody. Have a good night. Um, enjoy yourself. Stay healthy. I got a new camera. Tell me what you think of it. It's this one. It's the sort of B camera. Uh, I don't know if there's going to be any difference, to be honest with you. But, you know. I like it. It's a new toy. Anyway, till next time, take care of yourself, and we'll see you in the next video.